thanks everyone for being here. Um, my name is Moj Javadi. I'm the Associate Director of Program Development at Indoc Research. Uh, we actually provide uh, research data management services, resources, and tools to various research organizations nationally as well as internationally. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about uh, data management uh, in research. I'm going to highlight some challenges that exist in data management. We're going to talk about some policies and requirements that sort of drive uh, some of the needs that we're seeing in the field, as well as share with you some resources that will help you devise your data management plans, whether you're running it just within your study or within your lab. And one of those tools is a data management plan. Uh, this is the discussion we'll get into today during my presentation will be very high level, uh, giving you some, some things to think about as you develop your data management plans and what that actually means. And then finally, talking about electronic data capture, which are tools that you can use once you implement your data management plans, what those mean, what are your resource requirements as you, um, as you go on this journey of collecting your data and managing it. So, as Randy mentioned, uh, and uh, Kelly as well, um, really research data is big data. Research data is rapidly growing in its size, its complexity, and uh, its variety. Really what we're seeing here is that you know, any research study can include multiple different types of data modalities collected from multiple different technologies, all of which require different data management skill sets, processing, and analysis. All of this adds complexity. And again, research data is no, and research is no different than any other industry that's dealing with these big data challenges. But what makes healthcare and medical big data a little bit more challenging is that we're dealing with some uh, regulatory, within the regulatory environment that we're in. So if you're dealing with patient data, you got patient privacy to, to consider, as well as the regulatory environment within your hospital institution, your REBs. So that adds another layer of complexity. Additionally, a lot of times when you're working within an institution or a hospital, you're dealing with a lot of legacy technologies and legacy systems. And a lot of times those drive silos. Not because they're bad systems, but at the time that they were designed, the technology wasn't at a place that required the data integration or was dealing with the volumes and the velocity of the data that we're seeing now. So again, that adds another challenge. How do you work with uh, legacy systems when you're trying to do data management that need, meets today's needs? But with all of these challenges also comes great opportunity, and that's one of the critical Vs of big data, value. So you can drive a lot of value from big data that, uh, that, uh, that is being collected within research. And a key to actually getting at that value is data management and appropriate data management. And to us and at Indoc Research, really the approach should be cross-discipline. So you should, it should not be just specific to your discipline. And it should also address multiple data modalities. That way you can actually start getting at solutions that are scalable and sustainable, that, that move on with the technology as the technology advances as well. So good data management practices will obviously lead to better quality data. Better quality data is easier to share. And we had Randy and Kelly mentioned open science. And data sharing is a core concept and obviously as an incentive to drive scientific discovery. And multiple international organizations, including OECD, INCF, Ontario Brain Institute, they really advocate for data sharing and open science. And uh, there has been tons of guidelines, papers, and, and you know, opinion pieces about how data sharing and data management should advance within research those have translated to policies and requirements by funders. So NIH, NSF in the US now require every grant application to have a data management plan and a data sharing plan where you outline exactly how you're going to be collecting your data, how you're gonna be maintaining it, who's responsible, and how do you disseminate that data after uh, your, your project is complete. Within a Canadian setting, the Tri-Council, which includes CIHR, NSERC, and SHRC, actually came up with their digital data management uh, principles back in 2015. And this basically provided a high level overview of the requirements that each of these institutions require from uh, funded bodies of what they expect from their, their data management and how they manage the data that they're funded to actually produce. So when you think about these policies and requirements, and when you read them, they seem really high level, uh, and they're not very clear. How would you operationalize this? How would you actually implement 
these rules and requirements. And to overcome this, there's actually a growing community of researchers and advocates that are building and sharing tools and resources that allow you to operationalize and actually implement some of those requirements. One of those being the FAIR principles. And again, FAIR principles is another those high level kind of concepts uh, that needs some sort of resources and documentation in order for, for operationalization. And FAIR stands for findable, accessible, um, interoperable and reusable. And I'll just briefly touch on this. So what does findable research really mean? So findable research really indicates that your data also includes uh, metadata that clearly describes it. Basically making your data findable. Your data points have globa uh, globally unique and persistent identifiers so they can be searched and queries. What does accessible mean? Where is your data kept? Can it be actually shared? using uh, the identifiers that you have assigned to that data? And can it be searched using standard communication protocols that are open, free, and universally implemented? Um, next, interoperable. What does interoperable mean? A lot of times when you collect data within one modality, you're collecting clinical and imaging data. Eventually when you analyze it, you want to analyze it with uh, administrative data from CHI-HI or ICES. You need to think about those those types of integrations and interoperabilities as you're collecting your data. What that means is that the metadata that you're collecting along with your data should address those integrations and those interoperabilities that you see in the future. And finally, reusability. The key driver is your reusability here, right? Data sharing is a driver of innovation and it's how we get more return on investment on every piece of data that we create. And that means that including rich metadata that describes every data point very carefully. And that data, metadata also includes concepts around provenance. What did you do to the data? Who produced it? Who analyzed it? What kind of analyses? And these metadata should also be associated with standards, and we'll get into that as well, because those standards really drive usability. And there's multiple groups that are advocating for FAIR and actually giving you tools of how to implement FAIR data practices within your research. INCF being one of them, there's tons of resources available uh, through INCF. Go Fair is another one, Force 11. There's tons of communities around, and this is a continuously developing matter. On a Canadian perspective, the Portage Network, which actually was a result of the Tri-Council um, uh, principles and, and, and study that they did, provides you everything from templates, there's training materials, there's videos. There's actually a, a little online course that get, walks you through exactly how to create your data management plan. So we won't get into it here, but check out these resources because there is physical tools that you can actually plug into and walk through. And the point of these FAIR principles, and we'll get into data management plans, is that it starts giving you items to think about when you're thinking about your data. If you think about it, data is, is a big currency when it comes to research. How can you maximize uh, what you gain out of your data? And like I've been mentioning, data management pl plans play a critical role. Now, data management plans as a concept, when you look at them, they really highlight various and help you frame various needs that you need you have in terms of your, your data management. And a data management plan typically includes the following aspects. And I'll actually go through each of them to sort of give you a better aspect of what we're talking about. So with data collection, that seems pretty simple just off the bat. What we're talking about is what is the data that you're collecting? But it goes beyond that. When you're talking about data collection, you're not just talking about the process of actually producing that data. You've got to think about the entire data life cycle. So you produce the data, you're processing that data, afterwards you're curating and, and analyzing it. That expands your data. That uh, causes your data to grow. It causes your data to change. So when you're thinking about data collection, think about all of those items. What is your plan to keep track of your data processing, your data curation and analysis? How will somebody come back and, uh, and look at your data for reusability? Is there an action plan for collecting all of those steps in order for the next grad student or the next postdoc to be actually able to um, reproduce that research. And that's where documentation and metadata comes in. So at each of these steps, you're creating metadata. Metadata, a very broad definition, is data about data, right? It describes your data. 
And thinking about all of those steps within the data lifecycle, including how you want to share or integrate or interoperate your data, defines how you will actually, um, how you will collect that metadata. Metadata in itself is an effort, right? So where are you collecting that metadata? As it grows, how can you adjust for new needs in terms of the metadata that you're, you're collecting? And is there standards for the metadata within your field that you can actually adopt? And we'll, again, touch on that a little bit yet later. Storage and backup, that's pretty simple. It's where are you keeping your data? But really beyond that, do you have a disaster recovery plan? Is the data all sitting on one machine in your lab? Is it at your institution? Is there off-site backup? So thinking about the longevity of your data uh, within the time that you're, you're doing your study, and preservation really leads to long-term preservation of your, your data beyond your, um, beyond your current study. And what that really means is that once your study's finished, where are you gonna store that data? If somebody wants to come back and access it, is there standard operating procedures and protocols that allows them uh, to get at that data? If you wanted to share it, where would you share it? And that actually has an effect on what metadata you collect. Depending on the platform or the environment that you're sharing that data, they may have requirements and standards for you to, to actually uh, upload that data for sharing. And talking about sharing and reuse, really the driver of um, most research projects, such as the virtual brain, um, where the core concept is uh, around data sharing. And you're seeing bigger and bigger data sharing um, or, uh, initiatives, right? Uh, OICR is part of one. A lot of cancer research uh, is driven through data sharing and the reuse of that data with, with multiple organizations, same as within neuroscience as well. Responsibility and resources is a key. So when you're coming up with your data management plan, who's responsible? Obviously, as a principal investigator, you're on the research ethic board documentation as being responsible. But then who within your lab is responsible for your data management? Who administers those databases, gives access? Do you have SOPs and operating procedures that says, who gets an account, how do they get an account, and how do I confirm the identity of it? If you're sharing that data, how is it exported? Who is qualified as a collaborator? All of, these are a lot of details, right? And, and it seems like a tsunami of details that you need to figure out, but all of those are really important factors that you need to think about at the, as Kelly mentioned, at the initiation stage, right? Because once you're trying to do it retrospectively, there's a lot more work that, that needs to take place. And with respect to resources, that's another thing with what we're trying to advocate here is that you need to dedicate resources for science management that includes data management. These kinds of activities do take time and effort as well. And when it comes to ethics and legal uh, compliance, your uh, participants are signing uh, consent forms. What those, those consent forms says, where are you actually keeping that data and tracking it? Can you connect that ethics data to your, da to your data set to allow for that sharing? Can the data be linked? Can the data be shared with internal collaborators or external collaborators? Again, that takes a lot of thinking and requires tools that are actually, and standards that, that are available in the community. And talking of standards, um, always try to use existing standards. And this is a little comic, you, you know, you, you, you start a project, you say, we need a standard, you look at it, there's 14 different standards, you don't like any of them, so you come up with a 15 standard, you get a bunch of people, they're like, that's a great idea, now you've added another standard. Really, what you wanna advocate for and, and try to do is use existing standards and stick to them as closely as possible. Because using those standards and the more people using standards allows the reusability of data and a wider application of your data to the research community. And there's tons of examples of accepted and growing uh, examples of standards. These include BIDS for imaging, uh, CDISC uh, for clinical data, GA for GH, and the minimum information standards, minimum information about microarrays, gene sequencing, whatever the case may be. All of these standards are continuously being developed by the community. Arrive guidelines, there's actually a bunch of standards on uh, mouse projects, right? So when you wanna publish a mouse study, the Arrive guidelines give you everything that you need uh, in order for that data to be reproducible and your study to be reproducible. But that's all good. You've got a plan, you've got a framework. How do you actually implement it? And that's where a lot of electronic data capture and systems come in. And 
I'd be happy to talk to anybody offline about what these tools are and what it takes to assess them. But a couple of high level points about when you're t thinking about electronic data capture. There's tons of open source and community edition softwares and options that are available to you. Additionally, don't reinvent the wheel. Check with your institutions. A lot of institutions have implementation of REDCap or various XNAT or LabKey. So these are all different softwares. REDCap is for clinical, XNAT for imaging, LabKey and Arvidos for molecular and genomics data. These are all open source or community edition softwares that you can use. Additionally, pull resources. Even if your institution or your lab doesn't have one of these softwares, if you're trying to spin up an instance of this, is there other labs that could benefit from it? All of these softwares come with granular access management control, so multiple labs could be using the same instance. So utilize that, and utilize these resources that, that, that are available to you. you know, at Indoc Research, I'm lucky to work with a team of really talented people, and we have a team just dedicated to operationalizing data management, and everybody takes different tasks and different roles, and really, from a career perspective, there's, everything, there's multiple areas that you can become really skilled in. So that's it. I will take any questions or any comments now. Thanks. Any questions from Rajiv before we move on? Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, and that, that's definitely a challenge. I think at a high level, there needs to be more concerted effort around standardizing approaches for REBs across institutions, right? If everybody has the same kinds of rules and expectations, that will make things easier. But that's not the case, and I think that's something that should be worked towards and advocated for. But the flip side is how do you track that data? And I think that that's the metadata tracking portion. What we do within our study, we actually have forms and databases that track exactly that. Who signed which consent form? Did they agree to sharing? Did they agree to linking? So then you get patient by patient linking to what they actually provided. So that allows you to have that granular aspect. And I think REBs will become more comfortable knowing these kinds of tools are being developed and used because it shows you that you are in control of data. I think REBs are doing the right thing. They're, they're protective of the patients, but they also need to be reassured that there are processes that researchers and organizations are taking seriously that protects patient privacy as well. Thank you.